Radio 4, it's 12.27. Rogue Mail Productions, in association with the British Broadcasting Company, presents The Skull of the Laughing Goat, starring Richard Johnson as Sir Digby Spode and Royce Mills as Hubert Carstairs. And swirling out of a foul grey mist, the names of Angela Down as Lady Gwendolyn, Geoffrey Bailden as Badger, Philip Boss as Bruno Kransky, John Glover as Yupo Quinn, with the participation of Morwenna Banks, Robert Harley and Christopher Barr. Introducing P. Bassett Davis as the shortest knight, and stamped in grand Gothic lettering at the end, Stephen Greif as Count Laszlo Stroganoff. The Skull of the Laughing Goat is written by Paul B. Davis and John G. Colley, produced by Woodford P.J. Havisham Jr., and directed by Sutherland N. Allen III. Rogue Mail, The Skull of the Laughing Goat. Diary of Sir Digby Spurred, December the 20th. 1936. Spode Towers has never looked more attractive, buried under its mantle of snow as the Christmas festivities approach. Having spent a frustrating day trying to find the broken bulb in the electrical lights of the Christmas tree, I was relaxing in front of a blazing fire, idly watching the flickering shadows playing across the family portraits, when Lady Gwendolen returned from shopping in London. Little did I suspect the impact which the devastating news she brought was to have upon my life. Hello, Mummy. Hello, Diggers. <gasps> Tiring day? Oh, ghastly as usual. Bond Street was a nightmare. No. And, of course, there was the usual problem of what to buy for Badger. Odd that one's butler seems to have two of everything already. Yes, if only he had a hobby, uh, apart from Morris dancing. But listen, Digby, you'll never guess who I saw in Harrods. Who? Count Laszlo Stroganoff. What? That's impossible. The last I saw of him, he was being carried off down Mount Everest by enraged yetis. You didn't talk to him? Not exactly. He simply thrust this package into my hands and said, A Christmas gift for your husband. Let me see that. As I thought. Quick, Gwendolyn, into the bath. I've already had a bath. Oh, there's another one. No, I, mean, I mean, no, no, no. no. I, 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 I'll open the window. Badger! Yes, sir. Uh, Badger, take this package very carefully and go and throw it into the fish pond. Oh, a Christmas present for the carp. How very thoughtful, sir. Just chuck it in, stand back, then come and tell me what happens. Very good, sir. Digby, isn't it rather heartless asking Badger to do that? No, it's well known the fish don't feel pain. Do you really think that Stroganoff is trying to kill you? Oh, why not? He's made several attempts in the past. But it's Christmas. That means nothing to a man like him. He's vicious, devious, and untrustworthy. Ah, oh, Major, still here. Uh, I mean, back already. What happened? When I deposited the package in the water, sir, the wrapping dissolved, revealing this rather attractive carriage clock, which is now, unfortunately, waterlogged. So it wasn't a bomb? No, but I told you Stroganoff was untrustworthy. Look at this. Made in Hong Kong. <laughs> hmm. I don't know what he's doing in London, but you can be sure he's up to something. Right, Kransky. I've got the skylight open. Now tie this rope around your middle. Me? Yes, you. You don't think I risk my own life dangling on a rope 50 feet above the floor of the British Museum? Besides... It needs a man of my skill and ingenuity to operate the winch. Down you go. Oh, oh, this is not fair. Oh, Ten oh, feet. I don't like it. Twenty feet. Thirty-seven feet. Right, that should do it. Kransky, can you reach the display case? Down feet. Down feet. Oh! Up a bit. Thank you. Got it. Ah, excellent. Now to winch you up. <laughs> oh, damn, damn. It's no use, Kransky. You're too heavy. Throw me up the skull. Oh, you'll have to stay down there till morning. But how will I avoid being caught? One of your legendary disguises, of course. Why do I have to do all the thinking around him? Read all about it, read all about it, daring robbery at the British.
Danish museum. Theft of ancient temple icon revives Spode scandal. Spode. What, what, what was that about Spode? Hey, 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 hey. Do I, uh, give me one of those. Oh, Frutton Scuff. Thank you. Right. Read all about it. Read all about it. Spode yeah. scandal. Read all about British it. British Museum theft. <laughs> Last night, a gang of daring international desperados broke into the British Museum and carried off one of the country's most treasured ancient artifacts, the right half of the so-called skull of the laughing goat. <laughs> well, the theft rekindles the scandal surrounding Roland Spode, father of Sir Digby, the famous explorer, who was accused of keeping the lost left half of the skull for his own profit. But it's not the province of this paper to speculate, but it is possible that Roland Spode, who disappeared 15 years ago, did indeed take the left half of the skull, but is in fact hiding abroad, and has now staged his robbery as a means of securing the part of the icon he lacks. But that, 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 this is preposterous. Hey, ta taxi! Taxi! Ha! Ha! To Fleet Street and don't spare the horses! Bring me the editor. I demand to see the editor. Can I ask on what business? Yes, you may. I intend to horsewhip the blackguard. Any particular reason? Any reason. It is plain as your face, dear girl. The man has insulted my oldest, dearest, longest lost friend. Where is the scoundrel? I'm afraid he's not here. Oh, well, where is he? He's being treated in hospital. He's already been horsewhipped three times this week. Well, in that case, I'll horsewhip the assistant editor. I'm afraid you can't do that. He's in court on a blasphemy charge. Well, what about the, the, the fashion editor? I am the fashion editor. Good. Bend over. Certainly not. Oh, yeah. I insist on thrashing someone. I'll, I'll call the police. Oh, why should I want to thrash them? Stand still, won't you? I'm warning you, sir. I can have you arrested. Nonsense. There's still some justice in the world. I'm the injured party. They'd never arrest me. Have a comfortable night, did you, Mr. Carstairs? No, not really. You might have provided me with a mattress. Sorry, sir. Prison regulations. You're not allowed anything that won't be used as an offensive weapon. Uh, Righto, sir. You can come in now. Spoed, old man. How did you know I was here? It's all over London, I'm afraid. Oh, dear. The Times have done a centre spread of you with the fashion editor. Ah. <laughs> they were wild about your plus fours. Damn, damn. Oh, I'm sorry, Spoed, dragging you further into disrepute like this. Oh, not a bit of it. No. <laughs> in fact, Costas, yeah. I'd just like to say how much I appreciate your taking a stand on my behalf. Least I could do, old boy. I think it's time I explained the background on this to you. Will this take long, sir? I'd like to lock up. Oh, very well. Uh, let's retire to Spurred Tiles, Carstairs. After dinner, I'll tell you the whole story. <coughs> Excuse me. Ah, Gwendolyn, that was an excellent repast. Badger? Sir? Cigars and brandy all round. That's very generous of you, sir. I didn't mean you, Badger. Right, Digby. I think it's time you came clean about this wretched skull. Well, all I know is what my father told me just before he left home for good. I can remember it clearly. Mm. I was only ten years old at the time. We were in this very room. I was standing, well, just about where you're standing now. Uh. He was standing just about where I'm standing now. And where was I standing? You weren't here, Carstairs. Yeah. I remember he was leaning on the fireplace. I was looking up at his broad... Honest face, lit by the flickering flames of the fire. Now then, Digby, look after your mother when I'm away, won't you, old chap? Yes, of course, father. Just needs watering once a week and a little trot round the park every so often. Well, this could be quite an adventure for me. Tell me about the skull, father. Dished interesting story behind it. I was talking to a fellow at the British Museum. Quite an expert. Funny old cove, but full of information. We were in the reading room, as I remember. I believe you're off in search of the skull of the laughing goat. Let's see. Quite a history behind it, you know. There's a strong connection with England, the Knights Templar. Pack of scoundrels for the most part. One particularly unsavoury bunch got blown off course from Palestine and ended up in Berber. All this, of course, was somewhere around the year 1320... 1321. Pretty young squire, what is called this place? The Caves of Doom, my liege. Ah, excellent. Yes, this rock fortress hath a dark and menacing aspect. Here may we forthwith invoke the powers of the Dark One. 
Yea, verily. We shall need three natives and a goat. Sorry, Spode, I'm a bit lost here. What's going on now? Did you speak, Squire? No, my lord. Strange, I keep hearing voices. These signs are propitious. Quickly, cleave the skull of the goat in twain. And that's what the chap at the museum told me. So, I'm off to find the blessed thing tomorrow, as you know. And that was the last anyone heard of my father. As you know, the expedition found the cavern and the two halves of the skull, but on the way back my father disappeared, along with one of the halves. And was he never heard of again? It's my belief that the Stroganoff family killed my father and stole that half of the skull, and that now Count Laszlo plans to bring the two halves together at their original location. Why would he want to do that? There can be only one explanation. Yeah? It was the very last thing that my father told me just before he left. I remember he took me aside, and in a strange voice... He said, telephone. Telephone? Yeah. Why should he want to say that, Spade? The telephone is ringing, Castell. Oh, sorry. I'll get it. Spade Towers, can I help you? May I speak with your husband, please? It's for you. Ah, that'll be for me. <clears throat> Hello? Ah, Sir Digby. Just a warning to stay out of matters that do not concern you. Who is that speaking? Never mind. But if you look out of your window, you will see what happens to those who meddle with the dark forces. Hello? Hello? He's rung off. Quickly, Castells, yeah. open the curtains and look outside. Right here. Good Lord! What is it, ma'am? It's Badger. He's spreading all on the snow. Stay down with croquet hoops. Is he alive? Yeah, but he... He looks jolly cold without his clothes on. That does it. It's one thing to threaten one's family and friends. But anyone who will interfere with a man's butler is beyond the pale. Uh, pack your bags, Carstairs. We leave for Burma immediately. Hang on, hang on, Spode. You know that I've resolved never to go on one of your damn fool excursions again. I'm sorry to hear that, Carstairs. I thought that your affection for my father ran deeper than that. Oh. All right, damn it. But this is the last time, Spode. Oh, darling, do be careful. I will be. What shall I do about Badger? Rub him down with brandy, uh, but put out that cigar first. Oh, hell of a long night, what, Spode? No, it's not the reason why. Ah, customs, this way. Welcome to Burma. Perhaps you would like to spend your first week here filling out this huge pile of official paperwork. No, thank you. I think you'll find this letter from the British Museum covers everything. Ah, yes. I see. Very good. That all seems to be in order. I'm sorry, sir. I do not wish to appear impertinent, but it is my experience that people come to Burma for three reasons. To assassinate the governor, to steal archaeological treasures... Or to clear their father's name. Well, I'm here to clear my father's name. And your companion? He's with me. Very well. And with whom will you be staying? You can contact us if need be. Care of Professor Yu Perquin, Department of Antiquities, University of Rangoon. Ah, Mr. Spock, welcome to my humble place of work. Do come this way. Hey, thank you. I say, you've got some really splendid treasures here, haven't you? Yes, and they are all for sale. Can I interest you in anything? No, I'm interested in something rather different. Of course, the erotic carvings are in the back room. I need a map. Uh, no need for that. I can direct you to the back room myself. Now, look here. I don't want to see any erotic carvings. Well, perhaps just a little peep. Casters. What I'm looking for is a map that will lead us to the ancient caverns of the Laughing Goat. Ah, such a map does exist. Huh? This is excellent news, Captain. Some time ago, yeah. I managed to acquire a very rare 13th century document, which I believe is completely unique. May I see it? Unfortunately, I saw it this morning. Blast! Who bought it? Let me see. I have a little check here. Oh, yes. Mr. Ella Stroganoff. Strong? Then, well, that's torn its spurred. How on earth are we going to find the caverns now, especially with Count Laszlo ahead of us? Fortunately, gentlemen, I happen to have uh, several more of these unique maps for sale. Uh, they are in this drawer. Ah, here we are. Let me select one for you. Oh, no, that one is still wet. Ah, here is one which should suit you. How much do you want for it? The thousand kayaks. It's daylight robbery, but I'll take it. If you're sure that it's accurate. Oh, of course it is. 
Just look at the detail. Everything is marked. The major routes to the north, the road to Mandalay, Bomber Road, jungle trails, dirt tracks, transport cafeteria, everything. Splendid. Carstairs, yeah? with the help of this map, we should be able to get straight through the jungle and reach the caverns in a matter of day. <laughs> Diary of Carstairs, February the 12th, 1937. Hopelessly lost. Six weeks have elapsed since we first embarked on this madcap adventure. Spode insists repeatedly that Stroganoff's men are a short distance ahead of us, but it is my own opinion that they are leading us round in circles. This impression was confirmed yesterday when I discovered the rotting remains of what might have been the paper hat which Spode wore on New Year's Day. <laughs> Spode of course, denies this hotly and continues to press forwards. Oh, damn this steaming undergrowth. We're making jolly slow progress. Sit up, Carstairs. Can't be far now. I'm sorry, Spurred, but I'm exhausted. I'm not as young as I was, you know. Courage, man. We're on the right track, I tell you. Oh. Stroganoff's men are less than a day's march from here, and they're scared. How do you know? See these? Fresh droppings. Oh. I bet any money that once we hear of this wretched bamboo. Good God. What is it? Up ahead. A sheer face of solid rock. Oh, well. Nothing for it, Spade. We'll have to turn back. Now get come back, Carstairs. Uh, this is just what we've been looking for. Look at the map. Well, that... There's no mention of it. Exactly. The hidden cliffs of no go wrong. Follow me. Just as I told you a mile back, Spode, it's an impenetrable rock wall. I don't think so. Look here. These markings in the rock could just be the faint outline of a doorway. If a chap was to push here, he, he'd probably find that, that, that the whole thing would... See anything? No, it's, it's pitch black. Mm. The air smells foul. It probably hasn't been open for centuries. Hey, what's this? Hmm? Steps. I can see steps. Oh. They, they look pretty slippery. Oh, steady, old man. I'm going down. Hang on to my trousers. Why, are you leaving them behind? I mean, take a grip on my belt, Carstairs. At the back, man, at the back. Oh, here's your drift. Yeah. All right, I'm right behind you. Here goes. Oh. Oh. Oh, it, it's absolutely massive in here. Oh, it's as black as my ruddy hat. Elves! Elves! What was that? The temple door. Someone's closed it from the outside. But that means we're trapped. We're trapped, Spode. We are trapped. Uh, we're no. never going to get out. Stop it. Oh, no, Stop please. it. No, 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 don't hit me, Spode, please. Oh, Spot it. Oh, oh. Remember what you are. What am I? British. Of course. Sorry. Carstairs. Yes. Do you feel anything? Well, I'm a bit depressed, obviously. Why do you ask? No, I mean, are your feet wet? They've always been a bit sweaty. What, up to your ankles? No, not up to my... What? Oh, my goodness! We're being flooded! Exactly. It seems that the entire chamber is filling with water, rising at a rate of an inch and a quarter every 5.3 seconds. Probably an underground reservoir cunningly released by the door mechanism. Our only way out is that passage above your head. Oh, well, I'll never make it up there. Of course you will, man. Here. I'll, I'll give you a leg up. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, that sweating has made you lose any weight, has it? Oh. Give me a hand. Yeah. That's it. Oh. Left here? No, it's right here. Oh, yes, you're, you're quite right. Uh, 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 now, oh, there. What's the problem? The funnel talks. Uh, I mean, the tunnel talks. Uh. I've got no way of telling... No, hang on. What is it? Wind. Bad luck, old chap. Have a peppermint. No, I mean, there's wind coming from this direction. So there is. We must be approaching the surface. Uh. Follow me. Those flood waters can't be far bit... Woof! Woof! No time for doggy games no, now, Stop Spode. it. I mean, we've hit a dead end. Dead end. And now there's no way back. But the walls are closing in on us. You're right. The only way out is 
up these metal rungs uh, set in the rock. Uh, well, carry on. I'm right behind you. Oh, oh damn. Stop door. If I can only... Oh, oh. Get it. And we'll be... Free! Oh, we made it. But where the devil are we? And what is that unearthly noise? That, Mr. Carstairs, is the sound of a thousand Buddhist monks performing a ritual chant as they clean out the stone tunnels which carry away the blood from the sacrificial wheel. Strugger and Bruno Kransky. Mm. Greetings, Mr. Spode. And in answer to your earlier question, you are in a vast underground cavern carved from the solid rock over thousands of years by these dedicated but wrinkled monks many of whom have never seen the light of day. What the places are you doing here, Stroganoff? I am fulfilling my destiny, Mr. Spode. A destiny which is shortly to unleash the unimaginable forces of darkness, of which I shall be the master. I see. And what am I doing here? <laughs> you too have a part to play. <laughs> a very important part. <laughs> Kransky, silence these monks. Silence! As you can see, you are surrounded, gentlemen. I advise you not to resist. Mm. These monks may look old, bald, and scrawny, but they are all masters of pokey do, an extremely vicious form of martial art which has absolutely no redeeming spiritual discipline whatsoever. <laughs> monks, take the old fat one away and lock him in the stone dungeon. Oh, no, I protest. Take us, Stroganoff. Give us Hang on. Bring Mr. Spurred this way. Mr. Spurred, this way. Not Mr. Spurred. I wonder what's happening to poor Spurred. Oh, this place is certainly cold. And blast this nosebleed. Oh, if only there was something I could do. I'd... No, these chains seem pretty solid, but the wall. It's very old. Parts of it are beginning to crumble. In fact... If I can just get a bit of leverage on the rings set into the wall, yes, I believe I might be able to work them loose. Yes, it's coming. I only hope Spode is all right. I wonder what Stroganoff has in mind for him. So, Mr. Spode, I trust that you are comfortable, strapped naked to that rock wooden sacrifice wheel? Why don't you stop gloating and finish me off? <laughs> All in good time. Certain occult forces must first be alive. What are you driveling about, Stroganoff? Simply this. The skull of the laughing goat, which, as you may recognize, I now hold in its entirety, is an ancient deity of terrifying potency. However, it is written that if the hands of an infidel defile it, its power will vanish. Too bad for you, eh? Too bad for you, because in removing the skull from here in the first place, your father became the defiler. What? And it is also written a little bit further down that the spirit of the laughing goat can only be appeased by the blood of the defiler's firstborn son at the sacred site by the light of the full moon on the first Wednesday after Pancake Day. That's tomorrow. Today, Mr. Spode. It is one minute past midnight. So now I suppose you plan to disembowel me with that vicious golden scimitar. No, that is for cutting the pancakes. I plan to disembowel you with this. Oh! <laughs> I like to see a mortal man in naked terror. Or possibly a naked man in walking terror. Or just a naked man as a certain... A certain... Disgusting. Yes. Where was I? The ceremony. We will proceed. Everything is in readiness. The full moon. The dry ice. The monks. Where are they? Come along, you monks! Come along. Hurry up. Line up there. Tallest on the right. All the best dancers on the front. Now, the skull. Where is it? Damn. It was here a minute ago. And now it's here. Carstairs. He's a skull. The skull. I beg you, Mr. Carstairs. Be careful. You cannot possibly comprehend the power latent within that artifact. It is no ordinary skull. It is a suppository. A suppository? I mean a repository, a repository of dark and unclean forces steeped in sin since 
time immemorial. If you drop it, the power unleashed could destroy this entire cavern and all of us with it. I'm warning you, release stone or I'll smash it to smithereens. Yes, yes, uh, release spurred instantly. Thank you. Right, Spode, <laughs> go to the mouth of that passage. Right. I'll come down the steps and meet you there. No funny business from your chap, Stroganoff. Otherwise... No, no, I, I beg you. Cast, yes, you never cease to amaze me. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know what they say, Spode. You can put new tricks up an old dog's sleeve, but you can't lead him to water his whiskey and so that one. Yeah, it's all right. Now, let's get out of here. Quick, down this passage. After that... <laughs> They're following us. There's only one thing to do. Uh, throw the skull at them. No! Diary of Hubert Carstairs, the 28th of February, 1938. I never saw Sir Digby Spode again, for the skull of the laughing goat had worked its curse once more. My dear old friend had made the supreme sacrifice. Seeing that our assailants were gaining on us, he turned back to hold them off just long enough for me to throw myself clear, and then he disappeared beneath the descending rubble, locked in mortal combat with the despicable Laszlo Stroganoff. In the year that has elapsed since then, many is the time I found my attention wandering from the mating habits of the Simone cockroach, gazing instead into the flickering flames of the fire, wherein I seem to describe familiar scenes from our old adventures. Ah, me... Could Spode have survived that terrible confrontation? If my deep affection for my old friend alone could resurrect him, Spotty would stand before me now. But <laughs> I know it is not to be. And yet... <laughs> and yet... The end. Dot, 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 dot. Question mark. <laughs>